They got used to skating practically every day up in Chapel Hill. And Bargo just isn't the best place for it, so I decided to come out to the skate park. But today we're actually talking about this lens, the 22mm f2, which was for like the first seven years of the EOS M platform, the best lens that you could get natively. That feels like it was way cooler than it actually looked. As we already know, the 22mm is neither a fairly wide angle lens, nor that extreme, nor that extreme of a wide aperture. But as I always say, even one or one and a half stops of light that this gives you can make a huge difference. No more vlogging and skateboarding at the same time. Well, that was fun besides the wipeout, I really like shooting with other people. So I'm gonna walk on my video and Cody is gonna get video of me walking on my video. Now, as I was saying, the 22 millimeter isn't like an amazingly fast lens. It is fast, it's a lot faster than your kit lens, but it's not something that's gonna be like an F1.2, F1.4, but F2 is significantly faster than your kit lens. Also, the shallow depth of field. This is at F3.5, and this is at F2. So if you have something like, I found when I have like brighter highlights, I like to have a little bit more shallow depth of field because it makes it feel less blown out. I mean, it's not technically less blown out, but it feels more like you're going for an intentional look. Shirt and shoes are required while shopping at Megacore. So what is this lens good for? And this lens is a good like all around sort of a street photography lens or street like video lens. You yeah, I'm able to do vlog shots like this. It's not as good for like holding out in front of you because it doesn't have IS and it's not as wide. So you have to like hold it out farther, which makes it a little more shaky and then it doesn't have IS, which makes it a little shaky, but it can be used. I'm able to do something like a vlog shot right here. Interestingly enough, Cody Warner actually vlogged for the first like two years with a 35 millimeter equivalent. Now on the GH5, that's a 17.5, and with the M50, that's a 22. But because of the different crop factors, it's basically the same focal length. And so if you're wondering, can you vlog with something like a 35 millimeter lens? <laughs> Absolutely, someone has already done it. Cody Scott, whereas he doesn't use a 35 millimeter, he actually uses a 40 millimeter on Cody. What do you use your 40 millimeter for? Everything, I use it for talking head segments, I use it for B-roll, the Sigma 1.4 40 millimeter. It's a monster, it's huge though. So you gotta work out a little bit before you can operate it. <laughs> Another thing that this lens is great for is like YouTube studio shots like this one. And in order to understand why this lens and then wide angle lenses are so great for YouTube studio shots, we have to understand why? And that has to do with the distance between the sensor and your subject. With this lens right now, the camera is about two, two and a half feet away from me. Not very far at all. This is about the distance that you would have if you were talking to like a friend, like I am now. And that's why a lot of YouTubers use wide angle lenses, because they want to feel like the people are close to them. But say if I was shooting at like 50 millimeters or 80 millimeters, and the camera would sit back six feet, when you're talking to someone at that distance, it doesn't feel like the same relationship. Think about like a public speaker and how you would perceive them. It would always be from farther away and in order to get good framing, you would need to have a longer focal length. Because of the perspective distortion that the distance to the subject creates, you get different feelings from different lenses. And this lens feels like a friend lens. Like if I put this lens really close to me, it would feel kind of awkward. Whereas if you had that 85 millimeter, that would be more like a public speaker, a teacher, a lens that would more invoke that type of a feeling, which is sometimes good, but for like a YouTube studio, you wanna have something more like a 35 millimeter or a 16 millimeter, somewhere in that range, in order to invoke those feelings of friendship. Also for a studio shot, having that shallow depth of field allows you to get more separation from your background. More than like, if you look at my last video with the kit lens, 
I didn't have much shallow depth of field at all. It was a little blood out behind me, but nothing compared to what it is now. Now, if you are using this lens, a few things that I would suggest. Number one is a neutral density filter. Now, you can get neutral density filters that are as small as the 43 millimeter that this lens has, but you don't want to do that. What I found really works well is getting a 49 millimeter ND filter, which is the size for your kit lens and the 50 millimeter f1.8, and then getting a step up ring from 43 to 49 millimeters. And that does two things for you. One, you only had to buy one ND filter. You don't have to buy one for this lens and those two other lenses. But the other thing, and more importantly that it does for you, is that if you just put on a 43 millimeter ND filter, it would be really difficult to spin it to change your ND. But with the 49 millimeter and the adapter, it brings it off of the lens a little bit and allows you to turn it. Now, because this is a pancake lens, you don't want to get like a 77 millimeter because that would overlay the edge of the lens. And the front of this lens is way too close to the grip. It just wouldn't allow you to comfortably hold the camera. Whereas this 49 millimeter brings it right out to the edge of the lens without interfering the usage. Another thing that you want to take around with you is either a gorilla pod, switch pod, or a travel tripod. I've been using a travel tripod a lot. That way I can get it up and I don't have to have something else to set it on. But any other sort of thing that you can set the camera on so you don't have to walk with it because this lens does not have image stabilization and if you're filming yourself, the digital image stabilization doesn't work very well. Plus that claps in anyway and this lens is already a bit tight for like a hold out in front of you vlogging shot. But if you look at the video that I did, unless it was like on a skateboard, I was pretty much setting the camera down and that was very deliberate because we don't have image stabilization to take out the little micro jitters. And so if you're vlogging with this lens, carry on something where you can set the camera down, that'll help you get, well, stable footage. This lens is really good for photos, like street photography type photos. This lens is amazing. It gives you that wide angle feel without being like an ultra wide architecture lens. So you could take some like wider portrait without having too much distortion. Now this is the second time that I recorded this segment and so I'm sure that I'm leaving something out that I put in that other version and then I had problems with that so I had to re-record it. So if I've missed out what you like about this lens the most, let me know down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Check out this playlist which has all of my videos trying out new lenses. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one.